So first, I'd like to thank the organizer for the invitation to this beautiful place, actually. I was amazed at how, besides the good weather, I think it's also a really beautiful place. So, so let me uh, start with this. So Armand Boulay once told him, his teacher told him that if you don't start uh, with a lecture with the letter G, be a semi-simple group, it will not be good lecture. So let a G be a non-compact, same simple Lie group. So let me assume it's uh, connected with the finite center or the normal thing. Then this is a maximal compact subgroup. So I did need a quotient that x is a usual quotient. This was with any g invariant Riemannian metric. Then this is a symmetric space. of non-compact type. So this in particular uh, implies it's simply connected. And then the second curvature is non-positive. And of course the most, the example we have seen a lot in these lectures is you take the upper half plane is SL2R over SO2, okay. Now, so in this conference, we have heard of uh, many examples about, so we have heard spectral theory and the scattering theory. Of the following spaces. Right. So what are spaces? The first is a symmetric space itself. And the second is we take a quotient. And the up have a plane by these discrete groups. Actually we don't just, I mean from the talks we have heard, not just any discrete cell group. Actually we require the gamma is arithmetic, Like SL2Z, we have a herd cell low, and or the COVAX concompact. Or more generally, geometrically finite. Then we also have heard about when the rank of X is equal to one. Then we consider such a quotient where gamma is convex co-compact. Right. The third case is, or the fourth case is, and when I talk about her, her double one rank of x is bigger or equal than two, then we consider this is a lattice. Okay. Now, when we look at this the list of spaces, uh, something's missing. What do you think? What is missing? Well, something must be missing, right? <laughs> because the world is infinity. Okay, let me, let me propose one, then I'll try to uh, discuss more. So the maybe number five, the rank of x is bigger or equal than two, and the gamma this is the infinity. And on the other hand, the volume of the space is infinity. So that's what I mean by the local symmetric space the infinite volume. Look at this clearly. This is impossible to study. Even I think for the 
for the one h equal to upper half plane, I don't think people can handle that. Just take any discrete group. Okay, so what is the suspect? I mean, reasonable candidates. So basically we want, hopefully, those, those gamma which are geometrically finite, or even the convex and co-compact, right? That's a reasonable guess. If you compare with uh, number two here, we don't just consider any quotient, only special ones such that a gamma is a convex compact or geometrically finite. But there's at least one problem with this uh, proposal. What's the problem? No definition of geometric finite so far. And we have better luck with uh, the solo successful attempt. Well, it's more than attempts, actually. Oh, convex. Subgroups. So this, this will be my main body of my talk. I want to explain to you what are some of the generalization of covax cone compound on a higher rank. Then I want to read some question about the geometry and analysis. Actually, it's fairly complicated. What do we mean by covax cone compound? Now, before I do that, let me tell you uh, some motivation. Why? Why do we want to study this species? So after, uh, like everything else, actually, the best answer is, of course, why not, right? <laughs> but I give you one reason already. One, one thing is missing. But let me give you another reason, which uh, related to uh, some subject, which is being, I think, uh, being promoted by Sonic. Okay. And we have heard of Sonic's name quite a few times so-called a thin group. Okay, let me define that. So let G, this be a linear Lie group. Or you can take this is a little locus or linear algebraic group. So it's a linear, then here's the definition. A discrete subgroup. Gamma of G is called thing if the following two conditions hold. 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 First one is the gamma is a risk dense. And G, this means the following thing. The gamma is not contained in any any proper linear algebraic subgroup of G. Or equivalently, if a polynomial in terms of matrix entry vanish. On gamma, then it vanishes on G. Okay, so that's the definitions are this then. Second is volume of the quotient G over gamma is infinity, i.e., the gamma is not a lattice. So asked Sonic, why did he use a th thin group? Right? So he thought it's a very good name, it's a short, and also carries uh, something. Now let me give uh, some explanation for the, uh, 
for the conditions here. This is very reasonable because we are looking for something which is not a lattice. So how about condition one? For condition one, let me mention a well-known result due to Borel. This is called the Borel density. Borel density is the following. So let's assume the center of G is a trivial. And G, G does not contain and a compact factor, simple factor. Then every lattice, lattice gamma in G is a risky dance. Yeah. So this is an important as a result. To show that the early lattice is a dense uh, in the algebraic geometry sense, even though in the regular topology it's not dense, it's discrete topology, right? Now in the regular topology it's a discrete subspace, closed, but in the risk type topology is dense. Now, so thin group has been thin group now. I think recently has become very hot. So let me give you my proof of why it's a hot topic. Because two years ago at the MSRI, they have a program called the Hot Topic Themes. And the Thin Group is a program for half a year. Yeah. But in any case, one of the, uh, the reasons, this is also mentioned in the previous talk, because they have many applications uh, in number theory. And uh, like a constructing expander and other, yeah, that was a conjecture, I thought, yeah. Lam, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Let me yeah. About bound of the uh, denominator continuous fraction. Yeah, that's a, that's a one of the main application now. Now, so the problem is, one problem is almost nothing is known. about geometry. Oh, X or gamma, where oh, gamma is a thing. Sonic came to Michigan, gave a serious lecture in April. So I asked him, said, how much is known about the geometry of this uh, locally symmetric for infinite volume? He gave me a very clear and uh, quick answer. He said, nothing. Now, so that, so, uh, so one problem is how to find some special special classes of thin groups. Yeah, whose geometry we can understand. Such that uh, Is uh, can be understood or finite. Now, in connection with this conference, I'm hoping that hope hope to construct real analytic the compactification. of such spaces as there's a manifold with corners. Yeah. And as you will say, yes? Yeah. One gamma is a oh, nothing than one. One gamma is a thing, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, because somehow I repeated the word here. Yeah. yeah, thing, yeah. I mean, the reason is the Zalisic density is, uh, as you know, Zalisic topology is very weak, not even T1. Yeah, so it's, uh, no, if it's a lattice, I mean, not, a lot is known, right? We have heard of the Borel cell compactification and the re reduction theory. 
But as long as it dances alone, it's uh, too weak. Yeah. So that's a problem. So we want to find a, uh, maybe a class which is easier to handle. It's also natural. Yeah. Yes? Uh, sure, uh, we can define uh, Sullivan Patterson measure. Sure, uh, which can be defined for any discrete subgroup. Yeah. Okay. But on the other hand, you see, uh, even for the upper half plane, you will see it's subtle. So, what is a thin, thin group? Essentially, it's a non elementary group, which is not a lattice function group. And this class is too big, yeah. Okay, so the, for the connection with this con conference, I'm hoping there should be a compatibility as a manifold with the corners. So this will provide a manifold with the corners where I think one can really, maybe hopefully can understand some special theory better. And these are genuinely interesting examples of spaces with the corner, right? So not just, uh, maybe, I mean, of course we can construct uh, such spaces in other ways, but this will provide the real, uh, some junior one. I'll, uh, okay, I'll talk more about uh, this later, yeah. Yeah, this remark, as I said, thin groups. A classical. One G equals SL to R, right? This is just a full, uh, Essentially, this is a function group of second kind, non-elementary. Because we don't have many linear sub algebraic groups to, to consider, yeah. So this is a well-known classical group, I mean, in topology or classical analysis. Now, so I want to talk about the, Generalization of convex for compact and discrete subgroups gamma of G when the rank of X is big equal than two. Now before that, let me start with a uh, the most basic case. So let me recall. I think you all know this, but uh, let me re recall this in any case. So this three group, the gamma of S L to R is called. This is one definition. Normally, maybe it's not defined this way. It's called a geometric finite. If gamma is finitely generated. Yeah. So that's one definition. But let me write down uh, the following equivalent one. The gamma is geometrically finite if and only if the following thing is true. Uh, no, so I think I'm, yeah, I messed up, but no, no, no. Let me change this. If gamma has a fundamental domain, which is a convex, a polygon with finitely many sides. Yeah, that's better. That sounds more reasonable. So we have a nice fundamental domain. And then we have the proposition. Now gamma is geometrically finite if and only if 
gamma is finitely generated. And if and only if the quotient space admits a compatification as the uh, analytical manifold with a boundary. Yeah. So both conditions are very natural because this really shows that geometrically it's a finite because you have a compatification which is a compact manifold with with a boundary. This is like a more algebraically. This is a finite generated. Okay. So let me state a. Uh, So let me state uh, the case. So in this case, the gamma is convex. Gamma is co-compact. If there exists a closed convex subset and in the upper plane such that the quotient N is stable under gamma, and the quotient is compact. Yeah. Now, this is a very reasonable definition. So you have a convex subset, which has a compact quotient. That's called a convex co-compact. OK. Now, here is a proposition. Gamma is a convex. Co-compact, if and only if the quotient of the convex hull of the limit set limit set of the group, this is compact. So this is the limit set, and that's the convex hull. Okay, so that's a more common definition in the case. Here. And that's also equivalent that omega b. So on the upper plane, we know we have the boundary, which is a circle. And you look at the complement of the limit set. So this is called a domain of discontinuity. Then in, in this case, if you add the domain of this continuity here, this quotient is a compact surface with a boundary. Yeah. So we have two very clean characterization of geometric finite groups and the covax co-compact groups. So the question is, how about For gamma acting on n, n bigger equal than three. What do you think? Same thing, same thing hold. But well, from two to three or four should be fairly similar. It turns out that most of them, uh, some of them works. Most of them fail. Okay, let me write down a few, few remarks. The first is. So, uh, So even in this case, the gamma is finite generated. Does not imply it's geometrically finite. Geometrically finite means in the usual sense that there exists a nice fundamental domain, convex bounded by finite minus side. And Now, since I'm going to concentrate on the convex co-compact, so let me state uh, several conditions about this. So 
So here's the, the proposition. The following are equivalent. First one is the gamma is convex. Convex co compact. In a sense, that is a closed convex subset, which is a stable under gamma and the quotient is compact. And uh, second is uh, re related, it's a convex hull of the limit set is compact. These two are most equivalent. The third one is this. Every, every limit set, every limit point, Z in the limit set is a conical. What do I mean by conical? So conical means, you see, suppose we have the boundary here, Z, and we have a cone here. So we have a sequence of uh, the gamma J X, which converges to this inside the cone. Yeah. So you don't have something so tangentially which you approach the, this. Okay. That's property three. And the property four. So you look at the domain of uh, So you add the domain of this continuity. So this is a compact manifold with a boundary. OK, so that's uh, 4. And what's 5? So here we're assuming, assume, Gamma is a Gromov hyperbolic. And uh, so we have the Gromov boundary. Then there exists an equivalent embedding of the boundary into so into the boundary of the real hyperbolic space. Okay. Number six. The gamma action on the sphere at infinity is expanding. at every point of the limit set. So what do we expanding? This means for every point, for every limit point, there exists a neighborhood. U contains a Z in the boundary, and some non-trivial element in gamma, and some C positive, such that for every two point, Z1, Z2, in the neighborhood, the distance between is bigger equal than C. Oh, C is bigger than 1. D, Z1, Z2, yeah. So that's the dynamics. So near every such a limit point, the, this element expands. OK. And uh, how about 7? You see, the orbit map. So what's the orbit map here? So you have a gamma, so you pick a point, x in hn, the gamma map to gamma x. The gamma maps to gamma x. So that's inside the x. And we know for the group, we have, uh, uh, say, uh, pick any word metric. And so th then, this has induced metric from from real hyperbolic space. This is a quasi Lipschitz. This is a quasi Lipschitz embedding. Okay. 
Now, there is one more, con one more condition. One more equivalent condition, number uh, eight. Gamma admit a fundamental, fundamental domain which a Oh, yeah, I should uh, change this a, a little bit, yeah. First is, this does not contain any non-trivial, non-trivial parabolic element, and there exists a fundamental domain, which is given by a finite union of uh, a polyhedron. Yeah. So as you can see, this is a marked difference with uh, the case n equal to two or three. In that case, you can take a convex connected polyhedron that's a fundamental domain. Here you cannot. I mean, you have to take a finite many. Okay. Okay. So that's the case for the real hyperbolic space. So how about gamma acting on the symmetric space when rank or x equal to one? Can you guess how many are true? Yeah. Where? Oh, references? Oh, okay, I can give, give you later. So there is a uh, several paper references. One is about it. I think in, in journal function analysis about 1985, which contains some of them. And uh, later on, there is a, this paper I'm going to mention. One is Karpovich, Lieb, and Porty. More recent one pre the 2014. They have, actually, they have longer. They have 11 list. So I'm not going to copy down all of them. <laughs> now, so what do you think for this rank one? Curvature, you say, in, in this case, the sectional curvature of x is not constant. So in this case, all but the last one. Last one. Eight. You see, Baudigio also has two papers. One is the geometric finite in the variable curvature case. He does not have this about the fundamental domain. What's the reason why we have a difficulty of fundamental domain when the curvature is not constant? The reason is we don't have a totally geodesic subspace called dimension one. You see, in the real hyperbolic space, you can talk about uh, polyhedral. And in the rank one case, it does not make sense. What do you mean polyhedral? You don't have these faces, right? And another thing is, okay, so let me write this down. Actually, this is a quite an important point, yeah. Oh, so maybe, uh, Raise this. It is in this case, the structure of the issue, fundamental domain.
or gamma nx. Maybe it's too complicated. Yeah. So that's why people don't talk about this uh, fundamental domain. Now, so here is the, uh, the idea is similarity now between, between finite volume and the volume is infinite. Now, as you heard from uh, Werner's talk, that is a Borel cell complication. And the construction of Borel cell complication, the so called, so in this case, gamma is lattice, or more special arithmetic subgroup, that is a reduction theory. Now, what is reduction theory? Reduction theory is not about fundamental domain, it's about the cost fundamental domain. It's, it's a good description. Of course, fundamental. You see. In many cases, we don't need a fundamental domain. We only need a cost fu fundamental domain. But the cost fundamental domain must have very good structure. That's so called the Ziegler set. Okay. Uh, let me describe it very briefly, since some of you may not be familiar with Ziegler sets. And uh, so this is a quite an important uh, uh, point is, is, in this case, so here the same, same problem. We cannot get the good fundamental domain. Okay. Let me give a definition. So a domain U and X is called a cause fundamental domain. Well, unfortunately, in the literature on arithmetic group, it's called fundamental set. If the following two conditions hold. So the union under the translation, you get everything. Second is, so we have a subjective map. This is, oh, no, yes, I should say this. So, so you look at the elements such as the gamma u intersection u is not empty. This is finite. So this has a consequence. This subjective map is uniformly finite to one. Okay. So that's what uh, the cost fun fundamental does. You, you, you don't get a bijective map, but you get a finite to one map. So this so sometimes has a good structure. It's cleaner. So let me give you one simple example. The gamma is SL2Z, right? X is upper plane. So we all know this picture, the fundamental domain here. Right? That's the fundamental domain. But on the other hand, so this is a fundamental domain, but you can get something. So this is a cost. The key point is that you have product structure. So that's an example of, of Ziegler set. That's the most basic example of Ziegler set. Yeah. So let me summarize uh, the reduction theory in one sentence. Wait a minute. Uh, no. Oh, 
maybe, oh, then maybe I should uh, keep this. Okay, let me don't erase it here. So let me uh, summarize the reduction theory. Th this involves many results. I could try the deepest result. So here's the theorem. So this is symmetric space non compatible as above. Now a discrete group subgroup. Gamma of G is a lattice. If and only if there exists uh, a coarse fundamental domain which is a finite union of Zigo sets. Okay. For example, Magula's early symmetry theorem is used here. Okay. The key point is that your Zigo set has a good structure, has a finite volume. And simple structure. Now, so I, as I said, there should be an analog between finite volume and infinite volume. So if you look at this, what do you think will be a reasonable conjecture about covascular compact? So assume the rank of x equal to 1. Then the gamma is a convex co-compact. If and only if there exists a cause, fundamental domain, which is a finite union of opposite Zigo sets. Yeah. So it's rather similar. So it's a covariance concompact. If you have a fundamental domain, which is a finite union of opposite Zigo. OK, what is opposite Zigo? Well, the, the, I just cook up this name. Let me give you some example. So what is uh, So here, when well, x is upper plane here, what is Zigo? That's a Zigo set. And what is of Zigo? Right here, x goes to from some positive number to infinity. But here, I give the opposite direction. Okay. Yeah. The key point is, I mean, very often, for many purposes, you don't need a fundamental domain. But opposite the one, uh, no, a coarse one which has a good structure is good enough. OK, so I'll not define the general definition of opposite zero. OK, Okay. so this is about the rank one. Oh, I have uh, nine minutes. I'm sorry. So let me try to do. So how about a higher rank? Now, and uh, gamma is a co convex So here, uh, let me uh, state the one theorem. Give the Kleiner leap and the quint. 
So this is a special case. I'm staying, okay. A special case of OER as a result. Assume x is reducible. This means x is not equal to product or to some other symmetric spaces. And the rank x big or equal than two. Suppose we have a group in G which is Zariski dense. So you have a group which is not too small, it's a Zariski dense, and there exists a closed the convex subset and stable on the gamma and the quotient is compact. Right? So that's the usual definition you would expect of convex, convex Kuklebach subgroup. So you have a closed convex subset, which under the actual gamma, the quotient is compact. What's the surprising conclusion? Then the, this convex subset is a whole space. When the gamma is a uniform lattice. So there is no chance you can generalize a covex compact in the most obvious way, right? Because you, get, you, you can only get a uniform lattice. So this, actually, I heard, uh, you know, Colette uh, at the Chicago University published a very uh, uh, paper one, which is about a limited set of rank one space. Never, part two never appeared. He also, people told me he gave up his research. The reason is that he did not believe the like, interesting generalization of covas uh, compact in the high, high rank. Yeah, that made him stop doing, uh, doing math, actually. So recently, there has been a lot of activity. Laboli, yeah, his ma name was also mentioned in the previous talk. And Gitchard and Wang Ha. Huh? They introduced so-called Anosov representations or another of subgroups. Okay. Then, uh, this triple, uh, a couple of which, a leap and party. So they, they took several conditions of uh, some condition of uh, the above list, so the rank one, the convex co-compact. Okay. So let me uh, be brief. So what they have done is, he said, announce of, oh, here's a remark. One rank of x is equal to one. Gamma is announce of, if and only if, so gamma is a convex co-compact. Yeah. So this means it's good generalization in the high rank case. So that's what uh, convex co-compact. So let me use this piece here. And uh, so these three people show that a north of is equivalent to a list of properties. Three, this is about uh, the conic limit set. And uh, five, about embedding of the gromorphal the boundary, and uh, six, expansion property at the limited set, and the seven, something about the cost, the cost of geometry 
of the, the embedding of gamma into orbit. Okay, so I'll not get in detail because they are all very technical. Now, what is missing here? One thing is missing is, you see, we have, ideally we would like some You see, we want, that's a number two, a very good uh, compatification. Let me also emphasize, for the real hyperbolic space of rank one, this boundary has played quite an important role in parabolic the continuous spectrum, many other purposes. So in this case, it's missing. Right? So that does not sound right. But let me tell you why, why it's a complicated issue. It, it, it's not a simple matter why this is missing. The problem is this. Now, which compatification? OX. In the rank one case, you only have one compatification. But in high rank, you have many. So we have this geodesic compatification, where X infinity, that's equivalent classes of geodesics. That's the one people often used. So here we can define, we can define a limit set. But what's the problem? This gamma does not act properly on the complement. That's a serious problem. You see, in the rank one case, you take away the limit set, the action is proper. Here it does not work. That an even more serious problem is, you see, this boundary has no analytic structure. So let me mention, you see, it's, no, it's not an element manifold the corner. So here we should use a so-called maximal Sataki compatification. Let me denote maximal Sataki. What's this? This is a real analytic, it's a manifold with the corners. So this, I'll be very brief. This was used by six Japanese people in order to prove the so-called Helgeson conjecture about eigenspaces. So the structure, this is crucial. So in the high rank case, so I, I believe we should use this compatification, maximum Satagi not the usual geodetic communication. So let me state one conjecture. I think my time is almost over. Let me state the conjecture, then some of the results. Here, then also some question. When gamma is the convex is called compact according to Labelli, uh, or if you want, if they are convex called compact according to that definition, then this locally symmetric space admits a compactification as a real analytic manifold with the corners. Actually, I also, I want this to be stronger. In fact, further, there exists an open subset omega in the boundary of maximum Satake, such that if we add this domain to it here, this is such a compatification. Now let me also add one comment. For the Borel cell compatification, the metric degenerates on the neopotent fiber. Here the metric does not degenerate. Yeah, so this will provide a very good example that one can understand 
the continuous spectrum of this and related to the boundary and also scattering theory. So there are many questions. Okay, so, so in some special cases, this is true. So this is based on work of a, a geek child and a one huh? Yeah, they did the main work. So I just uh, uh, observed some simple thing, okay. So here's uh, the result. When x is a zero up half space, so this is x plus i, y. x and y are n by n symmetric, symmetrices. Y is a positive, and gamma is a north of some special north of the above conjecture true. Is it true? And if I'm really optimistic, I should add one more conjecture. Then there should be a corresponding characterization or this class group. There should exist a cause fundamental domain which is given by finite union or opposite zero. So I think uh, I, my time is over, so I'll stop here. Yeah, there are many questions that one can study. That's really the beginning. For example, another way you can think of a product of rank one, covariance, co-compact. I mean, that's kind of too special. Okay, yeah, I'll stop here. <laughs>